things here have never been in the control of any man. Holy Spirit has always been in charge. And so we are praying tonight that the Holy Spirit divine should take control. Prepare hearts here. Speak to us from the throne room. And as his word comes, we ask that even it has been it as it has been recorded, that his word will never come and return void, but to do everything that he has been sent to do. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will do exactly what he has purposed to do in our lives. Begin to pray. Father, we thank you and we glorify you. Hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. We are gathered in your presence. There is nothing we can do without you. Mm. There is no word we can speak. There is no word that can fall on our hearts. When you are not in our midst, the devil will just scatter it. But when you are with us, every word carries a weight, brings breakthrough, fortifies us, brings deliverance. So, Father, we pray that in our meeting, uh, even as, as I see your rain falling now on your children, let your word rain. Rain, 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 rain. Let there be a supernatural encounter individually, wherever your children are stationed tonight, across the countries in the US, in Canada, in New Zealand, in South Africa, in Ghana, in Egypt, wherever people have spent their time together to hear from you. Let them not hear from me, oh God. I'm just a vessel, a mortal being who can be called home even at this point. But you are immortal and your word is established forever. The heaven and the earth shall pass. Everything we see shall pass, but your word remains. Your word is you. Your word is life. Your word is light. And so, Father, tonight, speak, 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 speak. Take control. The platform is for you. Take control. The platform is for you. Take control. Our hearts are for you. Take control. Our hopes are for you. Take control of the virtual space. And for those who are here to join, Father, be their reminder. Bring them home to share in this glorious moment. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I see somebody showing me his, his hand like this. And the person is in handcuffs. Father, this is the year that we have declared is your year, the year of the Lord. Whoever you are showing to me at this point, whoever is in shackles and chains, whoever is in oppression, Father, wherever the person is located, I pray, not by my name, but by your name, Jesus, that you destroy these cups, that you, you destroy this oppression, that you set your children free. Oh, arise and let your enemies be scattered, oh Lord. Let your glory shine forth. Let your grace 
overshadow everything about us. Thank you for the liberation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are welcome once again, everybody. For those of you who did not join early, I could not welcome you, but you are welcome. God bless you for coming. And for the revelation God was showing me just before I, I was about to end the prayer, as somebody has been in handcuffs spiritually, and I just saw it opening. And God is saying that there's someone here for some time now. You are not sick, but you don't feel well. There has been some heaviness on you. You've prayed. But that heaviness is not living. But tonight, God says, I should tell you it's over. And the sign will be that by the time you wake up in the morning, where I am is 10, 30 p.m. It depends on where you are. But wherever you are, by the time you sleep and wake up in the morning, that sense of freedom, that sense of relief, that sense of liberation will be around you and you not understand. But God says, I should tell you, the calves are broken in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Was any of you able to watch the video I shared on Friday? No one was able to watch. Chris, you converted it. You couldn't watch. I watched quite a bit of it, about 40 minutes of it. So. It was just 45 minutes. Yes. Is it now? Yeah, I watched it, brother. You watched it? Yes, please. What did you see? Oh. Uh. I saw um, the Holy Spirit at work. There was a young man that said he loves God. He wanted to do the work of God, but other things are stopping him. And there was a lady that they had to take the rings off her fingers. Yeah, a young lady, a teenager. Mm. It's a teenager. And what really happened, what was significant that day is that um, I was preaching, I'm going to share the same message today. God laid on my heart to share with the church, reliance on God. Then uh, around um, halfway, the Holy Spirit just interrupted the program, so I couldn't finish the preaching. And uh, so many people fell under the anointing. So when I invited them to come to pray for them, that's where I realized the lady was possessed, that young lady. But that's not, I want, I just wanted to let us how the Holy Spirit wept that day. But ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged today. I think my wife did this, the district pastor for the Church of Pentecost, Pastor Yao Ajenim Boateng, has just joined us. He came just when I was traveling, so we have not really met, but he's been a real father, always checking on my family. Pastor. Pastor. Abi, can you please tell him to unmute? I just wanted us to at least say hello. It's a privilege. I mean, with all the uh, stress they go through each day. Pastor, amen. So it's a big privilege. And um, so as I was saying, I was sharing with the church here, reliance on God. 
and then the Holy Spirit just took control. So we had to end and enter into a moment of prayer and uh, deliverance and impartation. So I'm going to share with us. Um, probably I'll, I'll, I'll start from where I ended on Friday. And I pray that tonight the Holy Spirit will allow us to at least feed on the word. Normally, when I stand in front of people, I pray to God that close my eyes and give me word. I, 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 I think we need the word more than prophecies and all that. The word itself is prophecy. If the word is in you, there are so many prophecies you will not be chasing. And so, um, somebody take us to Psalm 121 quickly. For those who want to be right and we are, we are, we are, the, 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 the lesson today is reliance on God. Somebody please take us to Psalm 121. Psalm, Psalm 121. Yes. I read. Just the first three verses. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From hence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Amen. Amen. So here, clearly the psalmist was living in a not too good situation, perhaps as precarious as we are living in in our times. And um, as I was shared with the church on Friday, it has become like when you wake up in the morning, instead of looking for your Bible, the first thing that drops into your mind is about the troubles that we face day in, day out. It's about how you settle your bills. It's about how you get your daily meal. It's about fighting one disease, fighting some opposition at your workplace, in your family, even in the church. So it has gotten to a point that we go through so much so that our reliance on God has become very minimal. Most of the time we forget that there is a God. Just like Gideon asked the angel when he called him mighty man of valor. I believe in his head, he was saying, go away, who is a mighty man of valor? Because the first answer, the first thing he said was, how can you call me mighty man of valor? If the God who saved our children, our, our fathers, if the God who brought our fathers from Egypt, from the hands of fearful Pharaoh and his, uh, his military, if he's still there, how come we are going through this? And I believe honestly, sometimes we go through this. Last two weeks, I preached here on God's, um, what, what was it? The love of the Father. And once again, the Holy Spirit just touched people. And we have six year olds, seven year olds crying and coming to accept Christ. I've ministered over the years, but I cannot forget that day. Six year old children cry. And there's a lady I prayed for who came to accept Christ. Not that she doesn't know Christ, but she confessed that something has been speaking to her to denounce Christ. So it took the Holy Spirit to revive her that day. We all go through this. We face one opposition and we think God has forgotten us. We pray for something, it is not coming. Situations are not changing. Things are not going the way. We have planned that it should go. The husband God promised us is not coming. The wife God promised us is not coming. The lady, the man we married, is not the one God showed us in our dream. 
He has become a beast. She has become something else. We question God. So the psalmist saw all these things. And he sat down and he wrote. When I cast my eyes onto the hills, onto the mountains, from where comes my help? The mountains, the hills are representing the sickness. They are representing the death. They are representing the situations that are confronting us on many by many basis. The broken heart, the disappointment, the retrogression, the fight, the demonic attacks. So he said, when I look at the hills, from where comes my help? But thank God for the revelation. He quickly realized that if I continue to focus my mind on all these things surrounding me, COVID-19, Alpha, Beta, what, 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 what. If I cast my mind on all these things, I'll break down, I'll lose it. But hey, my help comes from the Lord. Because the God that I serve, he's higher than the highest mountain. He is bigger than the biggest mountain. He is stronger than the strongest storm. So my help does not come from what the devil has purposed, but my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so instead, of looking at the situation. Instead of taking cognizance of all that I'm going through, I am going to focus on God. So sometimes when I tell people, I don't spend time doing warfare, people may think this guy doesn't know what the word is about. No, I know. Ephesians 6. Presently, the Holy Spirit prompted me, and deep in the night, I called Helena, and I had we had to do exposition of uh, uh, Ephesians six. We did that. Then the following day, I realized the Church of Pentecost was doing a series, and I had to do that before I could write a paper. I was about to write a paper. Any time I took my laptop, I felt lazy. I'll just go and lie down for three days. I couldn't do anything. The night I did that, the following day I finished writing my paper. So I know warfare. I'm not oblivious of warfare. I know what I have gone through. I know what sometimes God shows me. And there is a revelation that we are going to pray about. But the reason why I tell people I don't spend much time doing warfare is not because the enemy is not around. No. Mm. He's really pursuing me. Me, I was telling my friend, from where God picked me and where the devil did not even see that he was losing me. If the enemy gets me, he is not going to just steal, kill, and destroy. He will post me on a billboard for everybody to see me. Look at that guy before he destroys me. So I know very well there is warfare. But the reason why I don't spend time doing warfare is that my focus is on a God who is bigger than any enemy. So instead of going to my room and crying and I'm spending hours, spending hours talking about the enemy. You see, this song I'm playing behind is 24 hour uh, piano worship. I can play it all day, working, sleeping and all that. So I don't focus on the enemy. That's what I mean when I say I don't do, I don't spend time doing warfare. But when I'm doing warfare, it's very serious. It is serious. So don't get me wrong. But I rely on God so much. So that sometimes when my friends who are prophets call me and tell me, 
they have seen a dangerous situation. I tell them God is in control. When I was in South Africa, I was staying with a guy. He came to Ghana and he had a problem. And it looked like he cannot come back. But he did not tell me because he said he knew if he called me to pray with him, him, with him the first thing I'll tell him is that God is in control. And at that point, he did, that's not what he wanted to hear. So he did not call me to tell me. But I don't have any other words to share. In death, in life, in prosperity, in poverty, on the hills, in the mountains, in the valley, in fire, in water, God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, Elder, are you here? Let's go to Luke, 20, Luke 8, 22, 23. Very common scriptures that we know. Luke 8. 22, 23. Luke 8, 22 to 23. Yes. Oh, that's Linda. Yes, please. Good. And the two shall be one. Your voice is the same now. <laughs> now it came to pass on the certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, for most of us, we are following God. That's why we, we call ourselves Christians. But we are not relying on Him. That's exactly what the disciples did. He said, let's go to the other side. They didn't question him because they knew who he is. They trusted him enough that, oh, when we follow him, nothing bad will happen to us. But the question is, when the wind started blowing and our Lord was asleep, what were they doing? And that is why for some of us, we have spent all our lives doing warfare and chasing breakthroughs. Because when it started, we thought we could do it on our own. But there is one day, some many years ago, when I was teaching in a church, and the Holy Spirit just inspired me and I told the church, that for people of the world, it is not difficult for them to take what belongs to them or even what does not belong to them. Because when you are pre praying and fasting for a husband, they will go to a juju man and take a cream and get a man. When you are going for job interviews and you are relaxing, they will go to all the oracles, perform all the rituals, and get all the charms. So if the spirit of God is not strong in you and you go for interviews with them, once they sit, they have already charmed everybody on the panel. And they are going to take it. So when Jesus says, from the time of John the Baptist, the violent have taken it by force. You understand what he means. But for a child of God, even if something belongs to you and you have seen it, you still take it with prayer. Because the enemy does not want anything good for you. Mm -hmm. Never. 
The enemy hates peaceful marriage. Yes. The enemy hates it when people come together and it's for a good cause to honor God. The enemy hates it when there is a church that really has Christ as its foundation and the church is thriving and winning souls. So for a child of God, you don't depart. That's why Psalm 91 says what? He who dwells under the shadow of the Most High. Once you leave that shadow, and I told you during the COVID-19, during the lockdown, when I was doing lockdown, when I were locked down, I told you one day, I give you that revelation that I saw death so many times chasing my, my, my family. So many times. One day afternoon, I, I decided to take a nap. Around 4 p.m., I woke up, took my track suit, took my, uh, jog, uh, what do you call it, my trainers, and hit the road to start jogging. Why did I do that? Because I had seen this so many, and I just wanted to leave the house and start praying. So my jogging was a moment of prayer. I was under so much attack. And one day when I left the house, God told me, my son, I've given you this revelation over and over again. God said, my son, there are two constants in a Christian's life. One, you are always, you are always being, uh, what do you call it, in, in Satan's focus. His radar, Satan's radar is always on you. But the good news is that you are always in the hands of God. So if you want to leave, the option is yours. But once you are in God's hands, the devil will see what you are doing. He will see the unction. He will see the blessings over your life. But he cannot do anything about you. So as a Christian, there is no way we make a move. Sometimes people call me and ask me, why is this not going well? Why is this not going well? And I ask them, when you started, did you inform God? When you ventured into that business, did you inform God? When you went into that relationship, did you inform God? When you were traveling, did you inform God? You didn't. Now things are not going your way. And God is in trouble. He's to take all the blame. There are principles we work with. Now the wind started blowing. Peter was a chief fisherman. He knew the sea. He understood the language of the wind better. And he thought he knew it better than Jesus. The storm started, the tempest. Still, they did not go to Jesus. But you see, if you read Joshua 7, something happened there. God had been with his children to conquer mighty nations, mighty, mighty nations. Dreadful enemies. There was this small people called I. When Joshua sent spies to go, they came back and said, well, don't let us waste our time. Send only 3,000 men. They forgot that the only one who gives victory is God. Because he had given them so much victory, they relied on themselves, on their strength. But remember, the Bible says some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we who trust in the Lord we shall prevail and we shall stand. But tomorrow, when you are looking for those who trust in chariots and horses, they shall not be there any longer. Amen. 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 So they watched. They thought they could do it. I believe when the water started flowing into the boat, they started scooping it and throwing it out. 
That's a normal practice if you go to the coast. But the Bible says it got to a time they were in June party. She said, no more after him. And so they quickly went to the Lord. You know, as they walked with him, sometimes they called him Rabboni, teacher. Sometimes they called him master. When the situation was overpowering them, they remembered that our teacher is also a master. He's also Lord. He's not just Lord over us. He's Lord over the sea. He's Lord over the fire. He's Lord over every oppression. So if you read the Bible, verse 24, the Bible says they went to him quickly and said, Lord, can't you see that we are perishing? Reliance on God. Let me tell you a story. Um, Dr. Njia Okay, yes, uh, uh, how are you? Fine, thank you. Your thesis, which, which was the easiest chapter for you to write? Methodology. Okay, and then? Uh, I, I think that analysis. Good, it's excellent. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, excellent. Right, it happened to me. You start your chapter one with so much clumsiness and misunderstandings and all that. Chapter two, methodology. Then when you get your data, you don't need to go to the field again. It becomes very easy for you to do. Because at that time you sit, look at your data and you interpret. You know what happened to me? Every time I sit by my computer, anytime I want to read a book, I'll pray, Lord, give me understanding. When I'm going to write, Lord, direct me. I got to my analysis and I took things for granted. As we say, too known. I decided to rely on my own understanding and experience. I sat by my computer. I remember it was a winter day. We were in winter. I was then about to marry. So I remember I called Mrs. Samponsa then. And we spoke as usual. I sat by my computer for two hours in winter, a winter night. All that I could type was introduction. My mind was totally frozen. For two hours, I typed introduction to the chapter. And I was frustrated, I was stressed, I was angry. So I just shut the computer down. And the following day, I was going to work. So I shut the computer, went to lie on my bed. And I said my last prayer for the day because I was going to sleep. I prayed. I prayed. Then when I finished praying and I got my connection with God back, just when I thought I was sleeping, God told me, tomorrow when you go back to your work, look at this place, look at that place, look at that place. It took me a few hours to put my analysis together and my supervisor didn't have anything to say about the analysis. Reliance on God. Children of God, no matter your level of intelligence, no matter your anointing, no matter your wealth, no matter your experience, if you take God out of the equation, then you are, you are heading for disaster. 
even the chapters that I was afraid I couldn't, because my supervisor made me add quantitative, which is not my area, but God showed me the way. Now, when I got to where I thought anybody who can read and write can do, God showed me that without him, it's not about your ability to read and write. It's about him. Reliance on God. When the apostles came back to their senses and they went back to the father and called him master, master, he rose up and in an instance, he rebuked the storms. And they were marveled because the wind obeyed him. The seas listened to his voice. Tonight, if you go back to him and not rely on your own understanding, as a matter of us, it's not a fact, it's not our understanding, it's our misunderstanding. Because without him, there is nothing that we have. There's no knowledge or wisdom or understanding that we have on our own. That's why James says, if anybody, anybody lacks wisdom, let him pray to the Lord. So tonight, whatever the storms are, whatever you are going through, no matter how far you have gone, you have drifted from this father that we said. It's not late. You hear people saying, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. There's nothing like that. Don't leave his presence and draw to those people. Because we live in a, a, a time of grace. Because what those people are saying is the same thing that the rich fool said in the Bible. I have plenty. My soul eats and rejoice. And God said, you fool tonight. Your soul will be taken. We cannot make ourselves. We cannot do it on our own. Whatever you are going through, whatever your situation, whatever the devil has taken away from you, remember, we need to rely on only one person. His name is Jehovah Sebawat. His name is Jehovah Shalom. His name is Rohi, Rofi. His name is I am that I am. Oh, that let's end with one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 40, 31. I'm oh, sorry, Linda. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Yes. I read. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. It is very clear. God bless you, my Melinda. Amen. Those that what? Wait. Relying on God means waiting upon him. The waiting is what most of the time we cannot do. The waiting is the difficult part for us. Because we say it now and we want it now. Because we look at people in our age range and we want to get what they have also gotten. But God has his own plans. And the Bible says in his time, he makes all things perfect and beautiful. I never read anywhere where God said, in your time. He says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, I'll do it. But you see, when you wait upon him, when you rely on him, and the time comes, you mount with wings of eagles. What it means is that whatever you lost along the way, you shall pursue, you shall recover, you shall overtake. 
So brothers and sisters, my fathers and my mothers, tonight, all I want to remind you of is that as Christians, the storms will rise. The devil will do his worst. Oppression and opposition will confront us. But let's remember that when we rely on God, he shall reward us and he will replenish everything that we lost while waiting. God bless us all. And may his word resonate in our spirits every day that we live. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, your mic is on. I think you wanted to say something. Yes, God really bless you for the powerful message. Right. God bless you so much. Right. Uh, God bless you. When we have fathers like this, we just want them to share with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are we are moving into a moment of prayer. Let me share those instrumentals again. Do you all hear? Do you all hear the instrumental play playing? Yes, please. Okay. Because it's not disturbing us, we are going to use that to pray. Let's begin to thank God. For me, anytime I hear his word, I take it as a visitation. Let us thank God for this visitation tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For this reminder. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. For speaking to our hearts. Thank you for touching. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, you whose name is Jehovah. Thank you, you who gives peace. Thank you. Our Father, on whom we can always depend. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the holy name. Blessed be the holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's complete this one. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are praying. We are praying and asking the Holy Spirit, we are asking the Holy Spirit to take control, to take charge of everything about us and help us to deal with every situation that gives us doubts about God's ability to perform in our lives. He never lies. He never disappoints. It's up to us to trust and obey him and to wait upon him. And the waiting has always been the challenge. Begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to be in charge. Yes, Lord. Tonight we submit to you, Lord. 
come before your presence. We surrender every situation to you. Agaduza dada ya majidi dada dada mashambere ya mazude dada 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 dada. Iga doza dada mashambere ya mazida dada. Yes, we come before you, Lord. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us every doubt, every fear. Jesus, have mercy on us. Deliver us from every situation. In any way, Father, we have everything in the way of God that prevents us from trusting in you. Our own way, Father, we want to say. Okay, there is something we need to deal with here. As soon as I mentioned fear in my prayer, the Holy Spirit drew my attention. Many of us on this platform are dealing with fear. And because of fear, we are not getting to where we have to be. We've really spoken about fear on this platform over the year, but the Holy Spirit is just prompting me that some of us, and for fear, we cannot trust God. We cannot obey. We cannot sit where we are supposed to sit. So, ladies and gentlemen, begin to fear, pray and command the fear to leave. You are causing the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit to deliver you. It's up to you. Begin to pray. Command. Jesus, we come before you. Any spirit of fear. We know we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. No. We are not. By your grace, by your revelation, it is a weapon of the enemy. And we come against it. Father, we come against every spirit of fear. We come against every oppression of fear. We come against every demon of fear that is preventing us from trusting you, from relying on you, from taking charge and possessing our possessions. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Speak on our behalf. Deliver us. Deliver us. Deliver us. Deliver us. Pray against any spirit of confusion. Hmm. Yes, Lord, any spirit of confusion, any doubt in our hearts, any confusion, we cast it out. In the name of Jesus, we cast it out. In the name of Jesus, we destroy. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Shandere ama sindi dia kada daka sagada ya mati dia daka sagada. Do gidi kada ya ma sindi dia daka sagada kada ya ma sindi dia in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are praying. We are praying for that fortitude, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, that we will stand and never lean on our own understanding. But all the days of our lives, yeah. we shall rely on God and Him alone. Yeah. Begin to charge, begin to pray. Father, have mercy. Father, we come before your presence. Father, we give you the glory. And we pray tonight that we shall not move or do anything without your presence. Even Moses, with all the giftings, he never moved without you. So we pray for that strength, that fortitude. We pray for that delight to seek your face, that willingness, that humility to seek your face in all that we do in at all times under all circumstances, oh Lord. That we will seek your face and your face alone. And we will move when you tell us to move. No matter the benefits, if it is not for your glory, from us, Lord, that we do not enter into any covenant with an enemy. Help us, oh Lord, help us. Help us to live day by day under your shadow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Let me stop this song because we really need to pray. Okay. Let's 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 get this picture very clearly, please. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. yes. Good. About two weeks ago, when I was going to church, I started seeing a picture as I was walking on the highway. I mean, towards the highway to get a car. And what was I seeing? I kept seeing a creature. And this creature is definitely uh, snake like, but huge. I cannot describe. I cannot describe because it's something I keep seeing, and as we talk, I see. And God only shows me the tail, and trust me, the tail alone is as big as a full-blown human being. So I'm just imagining the size of this, of this evil creature, of this demon. Okay. So apart from the tail, I don't see the other parts. But what I see is that this creature is living underwater in the underworld. And I also see only the mouth. And it is vomiting very precious items. I keep seeing gold rings and a lot of precious items. 
So when I saw it two weeks ago, I started to pray and rebuke it. I thought it was gone, but it didn't. Anytime I see it, I, I start praying and rebuking it, but it doesn't go. I keep seeing what I'm seeing. Then just about three days ago, as I was praying, God was telling me that, no, we cannot pray to destroy that demon because that is one of the demons that the devil has assigned. No battery. No battery. That will only no be destroyed when the end of days come and then go through the, uh, the Satan and his course into the lake of fire. That demon will also be thrown into the fire. So I should not pray that it dies. It cannot die. Rather, the revelation God gave me is that what I see it spitting out of his mouth is how the devil has taken the possessions of God's children. It is taken to the underworld and it is being distributed amongst those who go to the devil for wealth. Are we getting me? Please, are you getting me? Yes, we are. Yes, yes please. Good. Because we need to understand that when the people go for sakawa and uh, ritual money and all that, the devil does not create money. It is the money that is supposed to be it's like a politician who takes the money that is supposed to be for the whole nation and enriches himself and his family alone. So the devil takes what is supposed to be for you and I and distributes it amongst those who come to you. That's why he's called the God of Mormon. But our God is a God who prospers. So don't make a mistake to pray that that demon should die. But we are praying that everything that is purposeful. Remember that when Daniel was praying for 21 days, the prince of Persia withheld his resp the response God has sent. If he had not continued praying, persevered in prayer, that was going to be it. But because he persevered, the Archangel Michael came to conquer and bring in the results. So this is our last prayer. We are praying that God should take whatever belongs to us and bring it to us. We cannot fight this fight. Only the Spirit of God can. But we need to possess our possessions. So begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray ma ma ga do sa da da ga shanti ga do sa di ga da ya ma sa di da da ga do sa da 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 ya ma shanti ga da ya ma ma ba san tu ki cha di da go sa ga de ya ma da da yan de sa de ga do sa da 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 ya ma sha da Zinda dosa de 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 in the name of by the power of the blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we take back what belongs to us, whatever the enemy has stolen, whatever virtue the enemy has stolen. Our lives, our families, our ministry. We have our career, our churches, our, our health, our wealth, 
the name he has taken, taken back in the name of Jesus. We possess our possessions in the name of Jesus. We take what belongs to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, there is nothing you cannot do. To man, it is impossible. But to you, it is possible. If the enemy has been able to take, then we pray to you. Every generational blessing that we have lost. Every grace, every power, every glory, we restore it in the name of Jesus. 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 We claim our marriages. We claim our peace. We claim our children. We claim everything good thing about us. We claim prosperity. We claim wealth. We claim good health. We claim long life. Now we take it back. In Jesus' name, we tell the devil to Jesus. In the name of Jesus, church of the living God, may you God reign on high. May you God reign in our mind. Now, first, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless you and we adore you. Yes, God. That you are speaking to us. Jesus. That you have given us insights and understanding descent to run back to you and rely on you alone. Give us that fortitude. Give us that enablement. Give us that humility. Yeah. No matter how you raise us, no matter how you bless us, oh Lord, let your spirit prompt us Jesus. of our limitations. That we will not exalt ourselves. No. That we will exalt you alone. Father, we pray that your spirit will never depart from us. And we pray that whatever the enemy has stolen from our families, from generations, by the power of the name of Jesus, we take it back. And we possess our possessions. Jesus name. And Father, we pray that this week will be filled with testimonies. That this week will be filled with joy. That this week will be filled with peace. That this week will be filled with goodness, with accomplishments. And we'll come back praising and glorifying you. And now, may the grace that is above human understanding, so the sad. grace that only heaven gives, be your portion. Amen. May the peace of God yes. that destroys sorrow, that destroys chaos, that destroys every unwanted situation, yes. be with you. And Amen. may the love of God. Amen that gives us joy be your portion now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.